We all want adventure. One reason we watch anime is to fantasize about thrilling experiences in an exotic land, whether that's a fantasy world of pretty elves or a Japanese high school. 2013's The Eccentric Family, or Uchoten Kazuku, capitalizes on our desire for adventure in a distinctly Japanese way. The protagonists are Tanuki, a real-life raccoon-like animal that, according to superstition, can shapeshift. In the show, they absolutely can do this, but they live in the modern city of Kyoto, right alongside regular humans and other mythological creatures like the flying Tengu, although ordinary people are not aware of all of this fantastical stuff going on. Imagine being able to impersonate anyone and anything and get away with it. Sounds cool, right? But you've probably never heard of this series, and I'll get to why in a bit. The show's setting of Kyoto is important because that was the old capital of Japan, back when it was ruled by the imperial court. The show evokes old Japan with its classic architecture, ubiquitous temples, and generally more traditional culture. This adds an important air of history's weight to the show, which is itself a major theme, but that's another video. The art does an incredible job of evoking this venerable old city, slightly run down but beautiful in that patina of age. The palette remains mostly muted, as is appropriate, with occasional bursts of color to dazzle the viewer at just the right moment. The staff clearly knew what they were doing. The show focuses on Yasaburo, the teenage middle son of a tanuki family. Now, traditionally, tanuki are famously laid-back creatures who just take life as it comes, and Yasaburo exemplifies this, preferring to wander the back streets of Kyoto and while away the afternoon trailing a foot in a stream. However, he also has a knack for working with difficult people and is often relied upon by his family to negotiate when someone they know is being obstinate. This is important because the eccentric family actually combines two otherwise pretty disparate genres. On the one hand, it's something of a slice of life comedy, as we see the various oddball characters in Yasaburo's family and beyond. On the other, the show reveals the many little dramas going on in the back streets of Kyoto. There's no end of politicking and negotiations between Yasaburo's family and other families, between various factions and influential people, all that kind of stuff. You get every, everything from important Tengu to up-and-coming protégés who want to make their mark on the neighborhood. And that's probably why you've likely not heard of the eccentric family. The, a long, quiet dialogue scene between two characters as they wander the city under moonlight will suddenly shift into high tension and possibly a lightning-fast action scene when the implications of that dialogue boil over and make someone angry. And that action scene might involve people shape-shifting into, oh, say, a tiger or a train. It can get pretty over the top. Fortunately, the show's animated by the venerable PA Works and directed by Masayuki Yoshihara, who came out of the same young animator training project that produced Little Witch Academia. Indeed, the eccentric family feels somewhat like that show, with an eclectic cast of characters and butter smooth animation. But make no mistake, this show gets really weird at times. Its geography often has only a fairy tale logic, where the back of a restaurant opens onto a giant lake that fits into a small room. You have to accept that keeping to, say, strict geography is not the point, that this is primarily about the characters and their interactions. Thankfully, the show does build up to a big climax that addresses the primary plot threads, and the end is significantly more serious than the beginning, but I don't want to get into any spoilers here. Further, the eccentric family is very distinctly Japanese, a trait which can be alternately refreshing and alienating. The show relies heavily on traditional Japanese myths and mythological creatures, introducing a number of fantastical mythical characters over its run. But if you don't know what those are or what they're referencing, they can seem random and silly, like the hand-waving wild imagination of a child. On to the voice acting. I listened to this in Japanese, and the cast overall does an excellent job. I'm honestly not a huge fan of the bullies Kinkaku and Ginkaku, which are clearly parodies of Japanese comedy duos, 
their whiny voices grated on me and their monologues went on much longer than I'd like. But this is probably a matter of cultural difference. On the other hand, kudos to Mamiko Noto for her role as Benten, which is alternately elegant and terrifying in a way that seems very realistic. If you can't tell, I loved The Eccentric Family, but I know its high reliance on Japanese superstition will be too high a barrier for many fans to cross. If you do climb over that barrier, you'll find a beautiful anime series with characters you won't soon forget, getting into situations you also won't soon forget, but that's a subject for another video. For now, if that sounds like a cup of tea, you're in for a delicious treat.